Traditionally, full stack development refers to a set of abilities and skills required to create web based applications and websites on both the front end and the back end. Nonetheless, full stack development has experienced a massive increase in employment in the recent years. Hello and welcome to this video by IntelliPath. So, let's talk about full stack development. The first point to make is that full stack software developers are now expected to be knowledgeable in a variety of additional domains such as cloud infrastructure and deployment, message brokers and data analytics. AI and ML technologies and IoT are also introducing new skill sets that will necessitate additional training. In other words, full stack development is generally required to meet both client side and server side functionality requirements. Keeping that in mind, we have curated a list of interview questions for those aspiring to be a full stack developer, be it a beginner or a professional. But before we begin, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any updates from us. So let us begin by taking a look at full stack developer beginner interview questions. First, what is the use of a namespace in web development? A namespace is a single global object that contains methods, properties and other objects. It adds ease of use via modularity, thereby providing users with the ability to reuse the code and avoid naming conflicts. Second question, what are the latest trends in full stack development? Candidates interested in full stack development should be aware of the following trends according to industry experts. Increased use of frameworks and libraries such as ReactJS and Vue.js as well as progressive apps, real-time web apps and mobile web development. JavaScript enhancements are beneficial to programmers. Finally, the development of a more compatible extension. Third question, is it possible to reduce the load time of a web application? Using image optimization, keep JavaScript and CSS in external files, reducing redirects, load CSS and JavaScript files asynchronously can reduce the load time of a web page. Let's move to the fourth question. What is the use of CORS? CORS is an acronym that stands for Cross Origin Resource Sharing. It is a mechanism that allows multiple resources to be requested at the same time from a domain other than the current request domain. Fifth question Explain pair programming. Pair programming is the practice of having two programmers share a single workstation. Formally, the code is written by one programmer known as the driver at the keyboard. The other programmer is the navigator, who looks over each line of code, spell checks it and proofreads it. In addition, programmers will switch roles every few minutes and vice versa. Sixth question, what is long polling? Long polling is a web development pattern that is used to improve data push from the server to the client. The client requests information from the server using a long polling pattern. Instead of sending an empty resource, if the server does not have any information about the client, the server holds the request and waits for some information to become available. Let's move on to the seventh question. How is GraphQL different from REST? The primary distinction between REST and GraphQL is that GraphQL does not work with dedicated resources. Instead, everything is viewed as a graph which is connected and can be queried to meet the needs of the app. Eighth question. What is a RESTful API? REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It is a compositional style used to create web services. It accesses and uses the information via HTTP solicitations. We can create, update, read and delete data. A site's API is the code that allows two programming projects to communicate with one another. It enables us to write mentioning administrations from a running framework or another application. Ninth question, how is multi-threading used? The primary goal of multi-threading is to provide multiple threads of execution concurrently in order to maximize CPU utilization. It enables multiple threads to exist within the context of a process, allowing them to execute independently while sharing process resources. Tenth question, explain inversion of control. It is a design control used to invert different kinds of controls in object-oriented design to achieve loose coupling. Controls refer to any additional responsibilities a class has in addition to its primary responsibility. Control over the flow of an application as well as control over the flow of an object creation or dependent object creation 
and binding are examples of this. So now let us look at full stack developer intermediate interview questions. First, what do you mean by data attributes? Data attributes are used to store application or page specific data. They enable us to store additional data on standard semantic HTML elements. The saved data can be used to enhance the user experience on the JavaScript page. A data attribute is made up of two parts. There must be at least one character after the prefix data and no uppercase letters. And a string value can be used as an attribute. So let us move on to the second question. Explain the distinction between blue-green deployment and rolling deployment. Blue-green deployment strategy. This deployment strategy creates two distinct infrastructure environments, blue and green. A blue environment contains older code, whereas a green environment contains most of the up-to-date code. At any given time, there is only one live production environment. Whereas in rolling deployment methodology, this deployment strategy completely replaces old versions of an application with new versions by completely replacing the infrastructure on which they run. The third question, how do you protect against screen scraping? A simple and effective technique is to use JavaScript to set a cookie value that is checked by the web server. Captures are also an effective method of preventing scraping. If an IP sends too many requests, captures can be presented to the end user to validate human interaction. Fourth question, which technologies and languages would you need to develop a project from scratch? So this is a hypothetical question designed to help you understand how the hiring manager will evaluate your readiness to start the job. It is a simple method for distinguishing between a good full stack developer and a novice. Therefore, it is important that you choose your answer accordingly. Fifth question, explain mean stack. Mean, MongoDB, Express, Angular, and Node is a well-known set of software development tools for breaking down language barriers. A mean stack is built on MongoDB and a NoSQL data storage text. The Express and Angular HTTP servers are used to build the JavaScript frontend. The stack's top tier is Node, which is used for the server-side programming. Next question, explain event loop in Node.js. Asynchronous programming is possible in JavaScript thanks to the event loop. Every operation in JS occurs on a single thread, but we can create the illusion of multi-threading by using smart data structures. Any async work is handled by a queue and listener in the event loop. When an async function or an input-output function needs to be executed, the main thread relays it to another thread, allowing the V8, that is the JavaScript engine, to continue processing or running its code. There are various phases in the event loop, such as pending callbacks, closing callbacks, timers, idle or preparing, polling, and checking with different FIFO queues, which is first in first out queues. Next question, what is a connection leak in Java and how can we fix it? So a connection leak in Java is defined as a situation in which the developer forgets to close the JDBC connection. When using a connection pool, the most common type of connection leak is encountered in Java development. We can resolve it by disconnecting the connection and paying close attention to the error handling code. Next question, what is dependency injection? Dependency injection is a design pattern used to execute IOC. Object injection and object connection are handled by the container rather than the object itself. There are three types of classes involved. First, client class. It depends on the service class. Next, service class. It provides service to the client class. Finally, injector class. It injects service class objects into the client class. Ninth question, what are the two phases committed in the database? Explain. So the two-phase commit to PC is a feature of transaction processing systems that allows databases to revert to their pre-transaction state in the event of an error condition. The two-phase commit strategy is intended to ensure that either all or none of the databases are updated. As a result, the databases remain in the sync. Tenth question, what is closure? Give an example. So closures are made 
whenever a variable that is defined external to the current extension is reached from within some inward degree it grants you access to an external function's degree through an internal capacity closures are created in javascript whenever a capacity is created to use a conclusion simply characterize and uncover a function within another function now we take a look at full stack developer advanced interview questions first what is the difference between event bubbling and capturing in javascript in javascript event flow refers to the propagation of events within the dom that is the document object model the event flow specifies the order or sequence in which an event is received by a specific web page as a result event flow in js is determined by the following factors first event bubbling an event is captured and handled by the innermost element first and then propagates to the outermost element and in event capturing the event is captured and handled by the outermost element first and then propagates to the innermost element the second question what do you mean by temporal dead zone in es6 so the variable declarations were only possible before es6 using var keyword we now have let and const in es6 let and const declarations are both block scoped which means they can be only accessed within the quotation marks that surrounds them var on the other hand does not have this restriction unlike var which can be accessed before its declaration the let and const variables cannot be accessed until they are initialized with a value the time elapsed between the declaration of let or const variables and their initialization is referred to as the temporal dead zone Let's move on to the third question. Do you know how to prevent a bot from scraping your publicly accessible API? It is technically impossible to completely prevent data scraping as long as the data within the API is accessible to the public. However, bot activity can be reduced by throttling or rare limiting. Rare limiting can prevent a specific device from making an unlimited number of requests within a specified time frame. A 429 too many attempts HTTP error is thrown if too many requests are made beyond the defined limit. Fourth question: What is callback hell and how to fix it? Many full stack developer interview questions are all about explaining certain technical terms. Callback hell is a JavaScript phenomenon in which the developer attempts to implement multiple asynchronous operations concurrently. The nesting of callback functions. to produce difficult to read error prone and difficult to manage code we can efficiently resolve it by employing the following methods first dividing large functions into smaller ones then use promises and finally use either async or wait next question what are the types of design patterns a design pattern in general is a repeatable solution to common problems in software design These patterns demonstrate the interactions and relationships that exist between classes and objects. Design patterns are classified into three types. First, creational. These are about the creation of objects or the instantiation of classes. These patterns are further subdivided into object creational patterns and class creational patterns. Next, structural. These are concerned with organizing various classes and objects in order to form large functionality and provide new functionality finally behavioral these are concerned with identifying common communication patterns amongst objects sixth question what are the advantages of using a content delivery network in jquery cdns are widely used in jquery because they provide numerous benefits to the users the server's load is significantly reduced as a result of cdns They result in significant bandwidth savings. jQuery frameworks load faster due to optimizations. And finally, CDNs have caching capabilities which contributes to faster load times. Next question, what are the types of CDNs supported in jQuery? So there are two widely used CDNs with jQuery. First one, Microsoft. It is used to load from jQuery Ajax CDN. Then Google It is used to load jQuery from the Google Libraries API. 
Eighth question: Give an example of a project you have worked on and the technology is involved. How did you make these choices? So this allows you to understand the full stack web developer's methodology as well as the sharpness and precision in selecting the right tool set. When discussing why you chose a specific tool set, you should be as specific as possible and go into detail. Demonstrate your ability to develop both the front end and back end of a web application. Ninth question: What do you think of AMD versus Common JS? So both are methods for implementing a module system which was not native to JavaScript until ES 2015. AMD, that is Asynchronous Module Definition, is obviously asynchronous, whereas Common JS is synchronous. Common JS is geared towards backend development, whereas AMD, with its support for asynchronous module loading, is geared towards browsers. Most people would find AMD syntax quite boring, whereas Common JS is more akin to how you would write import statements in other languages. Most of the time, AMD is unnecessary because if you served all your JavaScript in a single concatenated bundle file, you wouldn't get the async loading properties. Furthermore, Common JS syntax is more similar to the Node style of module writing, and there is less context switching overhead. when switching between client side and server side javascript development the last question what was your best implementation or debugging in the past the hiring manager will gain an understanding of the type of complexity of previous projects you have completed by asking this question you should describe the difficulties you encountered and the steps you took to overcome them you can also discuss the lessons you learned from the situation and with that We have come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Just a quick info guys. Intellipad provides full stack web development course in collaboration with ENICT IIT Guwahati. The course link of which is given in the description below.